Good morning. Uh, thank you very much. So this uh, presentation deals with interoperability of new data type with C data net infrastructure, case of flow cytometry data. Uh, this is not my own work. It, uh, I am presenting it in beha on behalf of Sumaya Labib, who was not able to come uh, to the meeting. Uh, so it's a work that has been done in the Mediterranean uh, Institute of Oceanology with uh, collaborators from uh, other institutes from, uh, from Europe. So first, uh, a word of, uh, on phytoplankton. So phytoplankton, first, uh, by definition, they are a photosynthetic microorganisms. That means that also that they are very tiny organisms, smaller than one millimeter most of the time. Uh, they also are the, the very important actors uh, of the um, biogeochemical processes in the, all the aquatic environments, not only the ocean. And uh, also because they are primary producers, they produce uh, almost half of the net primary production uh, on Earth. Uh, that is about 45%, but uh, they also represent uh, 2% in terms of biomass. So they are very important also because they, uh, they are very diverse and they, um, their composition, the composition of the community is very important to define the different levels of the uh, trophic, uh, trophic web. Um, also, they have a very uh, short uh, generation times, so these are very important for, uh, to make them as a tool for quality check of the, of the water column and uh, because they, they react very quickly to, the, to any change in the environment. So, they are very important, so, but the observation is very complex, first of all, because they are very diverse, as I said before, uh, in terms of morphology, in terms of sizes also, in terms of growth rates, because there are many different kinds of species. Uh, there is a very high variability in, at the temporal scale, but also at the uh, spatial scale, uh, in terms of abundance. And also they uh, have, uh, they are impacted uh, with uh, the physics of the water column and with the turbulence. So in spite of um, thousands of studies, probably more uh, of studies about phytoplankton, there are still serious lacks uh, to understand some of the, the, their impact on the biogeochemical processes and also at a very short term, especially at a very short term uh, uh, variability in the ocean. So now we will talk, I mean, I will talk about cytometry, flow cytometry. So flow cytometry in the last 15 years has been, uh, has uh, evolved very, very quickly, very rapidly uh, from the first uh, equipment that were bench top um, equipment uh, in here. So these were like usual um, uh, sensors that uh, do discrete uh, samples. Uh, and during the last years, um, we have uh, we have had very new new uh, equipment with uh, high continuous high uh, um, fast uh, oh, sorry um, automated sorry automated measurements of uh, of samples like the Cytopro that uh, is here in the Marseille. Uh, institute. Also the Cytosense that you can see here in the ferry box or close to the ferry box on the uh, uh, opportunity ships and they can also be mounted on, uh, on a buoy for several months to get the, the data. So any, uh, in any case, if you, you, you use a bench stop or automated flow cytometry, uh, the, the analysis is the same. That means that we have the water uh, that is analyzed through the, uh, and, and that goes through the um, uh, laser beam. 
uh, with the cells. So each cell and each particle that is in the water will be analyzed and its uh, optical properties will be detected with the laser beam. Um, so we can see here the optical properties. We have the fluorescence. We also have the, the apparent size, which, which is the uh, forward uh, scatter. And in some uh, equipment, we can also have some pictures of the particles and some pictures of the, of the cells. If they are uh, big enough, like about uh, higher than 20 microns, then it's possible to get a picture of the cell. So what we get also by the end is uh, this kind of cytogram that you have here below uh, that shows the different properties and each abundance of each functional group of the different kinds of phytoplankton. So this work is part of the Sea Data Cloud project, uh, and especially the uh, work package 9 that was about ingesting, validating, and the long-term storage and access of flow cytometry data. So uh, this uh, task was, uh, can be broken down into three different uh, parts. The first was to, to, uh, to define a common vocabulary for flow cytometry data. Uh, then, uh, of course, to define the data transport format for the same kind of data, for flow cytometry data. And then, of course, the in, to ingest the, the data uh, into CDATANET infrastructure <laughs> and portal. So the first step, the common vocabulary for the flow cytometry data, can be itself uh, broken down into four different steps. First, they do uh, analysis of the existing codes, uh, that is the PO1 list, the vocabulary for the PO1 list. Uh, then they work on the, with the Jericho Next um, project and other partners, uh, five, especially five different uh, marine institutes that were used to work on flow cytometry data. And they try to identify the common parameters that most of the users uh, used to, to work with uh, flow cytometry data. Then they also did a uh, very important work on literature review from the last 35 years on flow cytometry data to identify and to give definitions of those parameters. And finally, they build up a questionnaire uh, with 58 questions that was sent to 180 users, uh, regular users of flow cytometry. So these are the results. Uh, first of all, about the common parameters, they identify 26 common parameters. Uh, most of them were about uh, fluorescence or uh, scatter, which is size. And also they have two different parameters on cluster identification. So the names of the, of the, the organism identified. Uh, the work that has been done in the literature review was uh, also very important and then they were able to uh, give a definition of those 26 common parameters uh, defined before uh, and they also found uh, other parameters, uh, other important parameters that they were able to, ident to, def to give a definition for those parameters. That those parameters were about uh, functional groups or uh, the other parameters, are abundance or uh, fluor different types of fluorescence or uh, size, etc. So the, um, the last step was then to send the questionnaire. This questionnaire, uh, the, the, um, the aim and the objective of the questionnaire so was to um, standardize, to validate and to uh, optimize the long term and to guarantee the long term uh, storage and the access of uh, data from flow cytometry. So this questionnaire was then sent, as I said before, to 180 users all around the world. They got 38 answers. Uh, they were waiting for about two months. So only 38 answers, most of them from Europe, some of them from uh, North or South America and also from Asia. Uh, most of the answers were complete. Two or three of them were incomplete. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, when you see the different uh, profile of the user that uh, sent the answer to this questionnaire, 
uh, you can see that most of them were researchers or engineers, and especially the most important is that they were confirm or expert uh, level of uh, about flow cytometry uh, utilization. So the 38 answers is, uh, we can say that it's representative of the, the utilization of the, the vocabulary for flow cytometry. So once they got that, uh, they had to align, to get aligned with the semantic uh, model of uh, BODC as uh, presented yesterday by uh, Wenael, so that means that, that they have a property, they have an object, I mean we have a property, we have an object, we have a relation, we have a matrix, we have a, a method also, and because flow cytometry is about biology, but it's also about optical properties, that is a physical model, they have two different kinds of parameters, so they had to fit either uh, biological model or the physical model. So, as uh, for instance, you can see for the biological model, uh, an, an example here, we can get the abundance of bacteria. Uh, so, using the WORMS database also to get in relation with the right taxonomy uh, per unit volume of the water body. And the method, of course, is the automated flow cytometry. Uh, physical uh, parameter here was, for, ex for, for instance, the forward light scatter uh, in average, that was a statistic, uh, per cluster in the water body, and of course with the same method, with the flow cytometry uh, sensors. So, uh, once they got all these definitions, and uh, they, what they did is that they create a new list, the FO2 list, uh, which is a dedicated list for flow cytometry cluster names, and also they updated the different list, the, the PO1, the PO2, and also the L22 catalog uh, with the different vocabularies, with the new voca new words of the of the library. Um, so that was for the vo for, for the vocabularies. So then the second step was the data transport format. So this was also created, uh, and this has been published on uh, the CDATANET portal, uh, with, of course, the documentation, uh, the specific documentation about um, about the different uh, parts of the of the format. And then the last step was to ingest the data into the CDATANET portal. So with the first local management of data, so local I mean uh, in the Mediterranean Institute of Oceanology in Marseille, where they get the acquisition of data, then the analysis, then the consolidation with uh, some uh, package uh, using our uh, software to get data files, and then the quality check by experts, and then the uh, integration into the, the cytobase, which is a database, the local data, data, uh, database on um, flow cytometry. So then they can go through the CDATANET portal that was uh, coupled with uh, Mikado uh, software to get the connection to the different catalogs, CSR, uh, EDMED, uh, etc., the CDIs, and then uh, the request, uh, the, the access of the data can be done with a request status manager uh, software. And then the, the import, I mean, the user can import the data with uh, ODV and OCEAN uh, data view uh, software. So that means that right now it's possible, since a few months now, it's possible to get into the CDATANET portal to get the data from flow cytometry, which was not uh, possible before. Uh, so the data is uh, accessible through uh, CDATANET. So as a summary and conclusion, I uh, just uh, wanted to say that the, so now flow cytometry data is ingested into the CDATANET infrastructure. Uh, whatever the instrument used, we have the common vocabulary that has been built up. 
and uh, acknowledged by most of the expert users on flow cytometry. Uh, it has been decided also to create a group of experts to be that should be interested, of course, in contributing to the to the uh, to the update uh, of the vocabulary. Uh, this update is uh, is possible through the BODC vocabulary editor uh, webpage. And the last uh, important thing is also to say that the BODC is also setting up some repositories for GitHub uh, for each individual collection, but also for the FO FO2. Um, and these could be used to share and to discuss uh, issues uh, with a wide, uh, more widely than, than in this uh, first project. So, Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any question I can try to answer. Uh,